trying to. I, I've done many attempts on spindle extensions, and uh, I they keep breaking off. They're no, they're no good for what we what we do with these motors for mud. It's pretty nice, but for off road and stuff like that, it's just they keep getting caught on everything, and it's just terrible. They keep breaking off. So what we're doing is we're here, we have a set of uh, regular old back tires right here off of a Murray uh, ride lawnmower. What we did is we actually took and cut the top of the spindle, or, or not the spindle, the uh, the hub, the actual <laughs> hub on the tire, and only took about an inch off. And it, this one's not finished yet. This is what we started with. Um, but through cutting that out, I still have sufficient clearance on my mower, as you can see. I mean, it still clears perfectly, and. I can bolt it on to the original setup. We'll actually get the process. I'll show you the process on how to do it on this one. Um, we just started filming a little bit late. So. All right, so we're about to start on the second wheel. And what we're going to do is, obviously it's kind of hard to get a grinder with a cutting disc done in there due to the shape of the wheel. But this is what you want to do. If this is the shape of the wheel right here, just a rough drawing. And this is your spindle coming up. Or your hub, you want to cut at an angle to uh, as far from the center line of the uh, the hub as possible, and do the same thing on this side, and that'll actually give you a line right there. And then you can just take a flat disc or a grinding disc or anything and grind it down smooth. So yeah, that's what you want to do, and uh, we'll show you that process right now. And the good thing about this process is there's no welding, so if uh, you uh, don't have a welder like we do at the moment. Or you're just a really, really shitty welder, like <laughs> myself. Um, this works just fine. Um, just a word of warning though, due to the shape of the wheel, you will get metal thrown in your face and it hurts. So please wear a face mask. Unfortunately, I forgot my face mask, so we're just resorting to shooting safety glasses, glasses or shooting glasses. Uh, <laughs> I can go ahead and tell you, I had one piece of metal removed from my eye this year, and it was not cheap to do. It cost me about $300 in doctor's bills. And to add insult to injury, we are using a cutter with no guard. And no um, gloves. Well, and no gloves, but so, I do fabricate my hands, I'm used to it, it's just my face and ears that I'm not used to having metal in them, so. So please do this at your own risk, we are trained idiots. It's kind of hard to get it started, but once you do, it pays off. Good enough. And as you can see, you have your first cut. Now, when you come in from the other side, so let's do our second cut. And our choice workbench of the day is an old 12 and a half horse. Sitting on a coffee can. That actually just came off of that. We did a motor swap on it. As you can see, it's got an eight horse on it now. I completely forgot about that. I mean, we'll shoot that here in a second. <laughs> not like they're just regular sparks they got to be the lava sparks yeah <laughs> as you can see there's a there's the piece that just got cut off and there's quite a bit of smoothing out to do 
where to do the smoothing. I would, well, last time I took, you know, I just took this little cotton wheel and hit it a couple times, but then my friend Corey here lets me know that he brought over a 40, 40 grit, grit flap disc. And it is by far, I will never buy another grinding disc ever again. That yeah, thing these things just, are the best. And it might look like just a piece of sandpaper, but really it eats away the metal quick, so you really got to watch out. Just one side of the V off. before shot before the flap disc now this is the part where you really get metal thrown in your face from the flap disc so if you have a face shield please use it uh, we will not be responsible for any uh, embedment of metal in people's faces so <laughs> be safe guys use face masks unlike us As you can see, after about 45 seconds of grinding, oh, how well. smooth the surface has come out. I mean, that is pretty close to perfect. And I'm not bearing down at all. I'm literally letting this wheel do all the work. I've, 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 had, I've never had experience with a 40 grit like this, but uh, at hard industrial surfaces, we use something like this. Uh, I do fabricating, and we do some, use this, the same disc, just a lower, well, I should say higher grit. It's like an 80 grit. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of these discs lasts probably uh, two, three weeks, and we use it every day, I mean, constantly, so. I mean, if you got the money and you got a way to get one, I, I would definitely, definitely highly recommend them. And this is a close-up on it. So you see, it's literally just a bunch of pieces of sandpaper laid end-to-end -end on top of each other. And this is a Norton 20X 40 grit course for, and it's uh, four and a half inches in diameter. Max RPM 13,000. Pretty cool little uh, tool we got. Do a little bit more smooth while leveling. It's smooth. Yeah. It's just um, level. I gotta knock that out. I'd work on this side and go that way. Well, bam. And that was quick. See how she fits. Motor bolted in, get my battery moved. And... Uh, you're touching them all on this side. I have to space that out a little bit. Oh, it's because I had this ridiculously huge washer up. Oh, yeah. And this tire still hasn't been pumped up. Oh, yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, this side, as you can see, fits really good, and there's no movement in it whatsoever. Like, that is good. So I think once we get that pumped up and everything, get that washer changed out, I think that'll do it. I think Joe wanted to talk to you guys about the Craftsman. Well, um, my 12.5 that I was on, it got really low on power, and I'm thinking it's a carburetor. But I had a little Troy-built more that had this 10 horse with a full start. 8 horse. Alright, yeah, I'm sorry, 8 horse. Uh, what what was it that had the 10 horse? The 10 horse was the... It was the rally. Yeah, the rally. The old rally we had. Which you guys never saw, it was just a parts mower. Alright, it's got a full start as an option. Um, it's also electric start, but you can say your battery goes dead, or you're like me, you have a phone box mounted in the front of your tractor. Um, <laughs> I mean, you have the option there for a pull start. It's it's only eight horses, but I noticed his, the Murray that thing's only got an eight horse on it. It's got a lot more 
lot more power and a lot higher RPM range than my 12 horse did, which, I mean, if I was being on pavement, I'd definitely want the higher RPMs, but at this point, this little 8 horse is putting out more horsepower than my 12 horse, so, well, 12 five. So I'm going to put this on there, that, and it's just got a real beastly look to it. I mean, I'm going to run two gas tanks. I'm going to get a splitter and put my other gas tank back up here. Um, and run a splitter down here to the carburetor probably on, either on this side or on the bottom of that tank so you know if I'm on hills and stuff like that I know this is eight horse if I'm on like an incline and I'm leaning to the right this motor kind of wants to bog out so I think also with having the secondary tank when I, cut, when I turn fuel onto it I can ride up and down steeper hills and on steeper slopes so that and I'll be carrying around about six or seven gallons Alright guys, you might have noticed in the background of this video a John Deere. No, that is not ours. We are not crazy. <laughs> no, that's a uh, John Deere that we sold um, to another mower guy. And as you can see in the previous years, it really got foam filled tires on. I think it's still open diff and original gearing. But each one of those tires weigh about 80 pounds a piece. So I don't know how well that thing would do off road. But, you know, the fact that it's a John Deere, that probably tells you that it ain't going to do too good off-road. Yeah. John Deere <laughs> is strictly for cutting grass. And, yeah, we're, we are hardcore shredded guys, as you can see by the toolbox. By the beastly the toolbox. That, well, there was a few Chevys here. Yeah, and the fact that we got my girlfriend's Chevy, we got my Chevy, and there's another GMC somewhere. And I got a 72 Chevy, and, but she's not here right now, so... We're Chevy guys. Alright guys, one more thing for me. Uh, I just bought this go-kart from Joe's brother. Uh, 150 bucks. Uh, I got, I'm going to have some updates on it coming up. Yeah, I know a lot of guys are saying lock the diffs, but in the mud, especially with these big tires on the back, the diffs already act like they're locked, like, what, limited slip? Yeah, so I they, like... Also, the Murray... The rear axle is just stupid wide. <laughs> so, you... Alright, we got a burglary somewhere. <laughs> but the rear axle is really wide, so if you can keep your weight in the middle of it while you're in the mud, both tires are going to be spinning no matter what. So, Unless you're just really badly stuck. Which I haven't got to that point on the Craftsman yet, so... Yeah. But all right, guys, that's it. We're going to try to get some riding videos in today. So uh, if you like the video, please subscribe. Check out our older videos. And uh, see you later.